Hi everybody, it's Ruth here at artfulstampin.co.uk. I did have something to show you. I brought it in with me. Where did I put it? Um, I've had a bit of a busy day sorting out uh, crafts and various things for an event that's happening in my town this weekend. So we have a 1940s weekend coming up. It kind of spans the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And as a church, we're doing an event called C.S. Lewis and the Narnia Experience. And I don't know if I'm going to get this onto camera, but I've been making this. <laughs> this is my lantern. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to wear it or if it's just going to stick. And look, I've, I've made it so that there's a natural candle in here. Sorry, I know you guys can't see it. No, it's not that I can't sleep. It's that I, sh I should be asleep. I just haven't got to bed yet. So, um... Yeah, hold on. Let's see if I can show you what this looks like from... There we go. That's what it looks like. I've been making this this evening. My lantern. And I'm I'm trying to decide whether to go as the lamppost from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Yes, I think Mr Tumnus will be there. Yes, we have... Mr Tumnus is going to be there. We've got a little Aslan. We have, hopefully, a, Mr. a professor and Mrs McCready. We have someone dressed as the white, the Queen of Narnia, as in battle dress, you know, like shown in the film. We have a Lucy. We have a Susan. We may have a knight. Um, who else? A unicorn. <laughs> it's going to be great fun. But I've been prepping for that. Um, I managed to get hold of. I know this isn't stamping up, but um, I managed to get hold of this die Sizzix die and it makes this adorable little lamp um who makes uh, a, a company <laughs> we've bought those in <laughs> yes we've, we've bought the turkish delight in so we're going to be serving turkish delight <coughs> excuse me um hot chocolate slow slow cooker hot chocolate and one of the crafts that i'm going to make available is stamping onto these so i have gathered lots of fabulous c.s lewis quotes some are from his children's book some are not so we've got this one from the line the witch in the wardrobe for narnia and for aslan of course once a king or queen of narnia always a king or queen or narnia you're at glasgow airport getting ready to fly to how exciting what do they teach them at these schools <laughs> the professor says that doesn't he only a real risk tests the reality of a belief that's a good one, isn't it? There are a dozen views about everything until you know the answer. Then there's never more than one. How cool is that? Um, anyway, do not dare not to dare. I like that one. Do not dare not to dare. Um, there are far, far better things ahead than we leave behind. You know what? I'm going to use that one now because it's got a smudge on it. So, yes, yeah, so I printed these out onto uh, pieces of cardstock. Stamp it up, of course, because I find it's the best quality for stamping on. And then also I've done the same quotes, but in bookmark style. And so the people can stamp on those as well and decorate those. And I like, um, what's this one? Eating and reading are two pleasures that combine admirably. And then there is one about a cup of tea. Here we go. You can never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. How lovely is that? Right, so let's talk about Purple Posy. So this ink had to go back to the um, testing ground, as it were, because Stampin' Up! discovered that there was an issue with the foaming of it. It was over foaming. And so this is a brand new one. It's because I ordered it in the first batch of orders, uh, Stampin' Up! are fulfilling those orders as a de as demonstrators so that is why i don't think it's available to order online just yet but it will be very soon so i just thought i'd get on here because i did share a photo and i wanted you to see it and kind of very briefly compare it perhaps to some of the other purples that we have particularly highland heather and also just how it sits next to some of the other lovely colors and you know what because it's late and i want to just get on and do some stamping i've chosen my favorite stamp set of the moment which is of course beautiful friendship 
and I'm trying to find a block because as usual my desk is still a bit of a look see I've got stuff left, left over from the last video I did oh dear right let's get this on here so howdy doody everybody lovely to see you thanks for joining me I really do appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to come and join me it's always so nice so let's see how this stamps up with these beautiful roses so I might come in a bit closer so that you've got a bit of a better view there so someone asked me on my Facebook group is it like the sweet sugar plum and I would say not so much it's purpley but it's got a slightly pinkier hue and I would say it's a lighter version of Highland Heather so if I just stamp Highland Heather next to it you will start to get a feel for for how these two colours kind of sit together so that's Highland Heather have I got that right? I get them modelled up with Gorgeous Grape Okay, so I will grab, grab out Gorgeous Grape so that you can see, because that's darker still. Um, there it is. Let's choose something different to stamp. Um, it's a lovely kind of ferny element there. I don't know if that's actually the best stamp to stamp to show you. Hey, from Boynton Beach, Florida. How cool is that? Hi from Kai Joanne. Hi Louisa. Oh, you're up late as well. <laughs> so, this is gorgeous grape. So I'm just going to do it by the side of that one. It, it's a tad darker than... What's this? Highland Heather. Okay. Um, yeah, ink-wise, it, it's hmm, it's very similar, <laughs> to be quite honest. Oops, unless I've been stamping in the wrong one. It'd be interesting to actually stamp with something a bit more um, solid. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. Let's add in some of the Granny Apple Green so that you can see how it sits alongside this lovely light shade of lilac. Super pretty. Now the thing about decorating a sentiment already, you've just got to make sure that you're not um, you're not kind of covering it up. Hi Elizabeth, lovely to see you. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, nice to see you. Okay, um, I want to cover that boo-boo up. Oh, a butterfly. <laughs> my answer to everything um, there we go let's just stick a butterfly on there and be done and I will do it in the uh, purple posy so that you can kind of see it at work in a slightly different way It's a very, very sweet colour, if you know what I mean. It's it's very delicate, very gentle. It's not too insipid, if you know what I mean. It's um, quite a sweet colour. Okay, I'd like to see it contrasted with something darker, so let's see if I can find another quote to illustrate. Oh, this is a good one. Don't let your happiness depend on something you may lose. That's a good quote, isn't it? Right, stick that one there. Hi everybody, hi Debbie, hi Vanessa, hi Cindy. Oh sorry, no, I said only said hello to Cindy. Right, so um let's maybe stamp the roses in 
Oh, let's go for the gorgeous grape and stamp off and stamp off because it'd be interesting to see how the lighter purple posy actually sits against this. Purple and green, yes. I'm going to actually explain to you why purple and green always look fabulous together. Because when I was shopping on Amazon the other day, I looked up colour wheel. And I bought myself a colour wheel because I thought you guys would like it after that last YouTube I did about colour. Right, so let's we'll wait for this to dry and then I'll comment on what I think of the colour. Because you do have to let this kind of calm down for a couple of minutes before you really make a good assessment on the colour and what it's doing. Where have I put the butterflies? Da, 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 da. There they are. Right, let's, let's find a nice butterfly to pop on here. Actually, I think a butterfly would be quite appropriate for this, uh, this word, or this sentence, rather. Oh, that's just perfect. So pretty. Get a little butterfly there and there. Um, okay, now purple posy, and that is stamped off Highland Heather. Yeah, have I got that right? No, it's not. Gorgeous grape. Oh, I cannot get into my head the names of these purples. Right, gorgeous grape is the dark. Highland Heather is the mid, Purple Posy is the light. But these two are fairly similar. So if you can't get your hands on Purple Posy right now, don't worry about it. You can get a very similar shade. Um, to me, the that just kind of looks a little bit pinkier, but it could be because this is a brand new pad. I'm not getting the definition that I'm getting um, with a slightly drier pad. Let's see what soft sea foam looks like against this. This was one of the colours I thought, oh, that's going to just look so gorgeous next to Purple Posy. So let's have a look. Oh, and it's just divine. Absolutely delectable. Look at that. So pretty. So soft. I mean, it's a gorgeous colour anyway, but isn't that pretty? Very, very nice. Okay, so we've tried it against a couple of different greens now. I'm going to put these purples away because I'd actually like to see what purple posies like against, you know, a darker colour, a darker palette. But while before we do that, I just want to show you my colour wheel. So this is what I purchased from... Amazon it was very inexpensive it cost me about £1.45 and if I kind of oh, it's got a bit of a shine to it but I'll try and explain it to you um, around the edge you've got your prime you know your primary and your secondary colours so you've got can I put it down there will it sh oh it's got a awful shine on it I'm so sorry about that right if I hold that there like that so we've got yellow, we've got blue and red. So that was the three colours as I was explaining the other day. If you haven't seen that video, do go back and watch it. It's called something like how to use colour or something in your stamping. So we've got yellow, blue, red. Then in between yellow we've got and blue, we've got the green. In between red and blue we've got the purple. In between red and yellow you've got the orange. But then in between those you have a darker orange and a a redder, reddier orange and a yellowy orange. Then you've got a light green and you've got a bluey green. Then a bluey purple and a pinky, a pinky purple or a purpley red. So then on this colour wheel, what's really helpful, I don't, I'm trying to get it to focus, I think it's sort of focusing. On here, this arrow, here, it's, got, it's got these really cool holes in it. And so blue with a bit of red makes that. Blue with a bit of yellow 
makes that. Blue, obviously with blue, just makes blue. But then what I quite like here is where it says blue with a bit of white makes light blue. Then blue with a bit of black makes that dark blue. And so you've got those options, every single one of those options for all the colours here. So I know I said the other day that red and green and red and green make brown. I think I was a little bit wrong. It's more about adding black um, or op adding colours that are opposite to make a brown. Um, yeah, so opposite purple here or violet is yellow. And look at what opposite it, what is opposite green. Look, put please, and green. And so this purple here is red violet, and if you add white to it, it basically makes purple posy, which is a lighter, a lilac-y colour. And look what's opposite. Green. So that is why purple and green work so well together. They're contrasting colours. They're completely opposite each other on the on the colour spectrum. So da da that's why it works. Then I discovered on the back, this is quite useful as well. You've got each of the each each of the colours go around, and again you've got this extra, you know, this bit here. Alright. So you've got yellow, and this is what happens when you add white, this is what happens when you add grey, and this is what happens when you add a darker grey. But then You've got, oops, you can see, as I said, you've got these bits here, but you've got one, two, three, so you can choose colours that are, um, you kind of miss a colour as it were, so yellow, green and blue work well together, yellow, green, blue, green and blue, violet work together, so you've got, you've got these choices of like colour combinations, or you can have all five that are close together on the spectrum and create use those as a colour scheme. And what you'll probably find is that once you play with this and start to understand colour a bit more, when you look at colour schemes, either whether it's papers, wallpaper, fashion uh, and so on, you'll go, oh, that's why they put those colours together. OK, now the other thing to consider is that you might see they say this palette here. But then someone might throw in a bit of purple just to make it a bit more interesting. Okay, or well, they might throw in a bit of blue. Okay, so anyway, the colour wheel, it literally was like £1.45 on Amazon. Very, very helpful. And it is, they say you just slip it into your handbag, it's, it's just useful to have around with you. Okay, anyway, I hope you don't mind me explaining that because. It seemed to me that there were quite a few people who were, were very helped by that previous video and I wanted to encourage you to keep exploring the world of colour because the more you understand it, the more helpful and easier it will become for the future. Right, let's do another bit of stamping. Let's use this one. Um, okay, so let's go for... Ooh, ooh, what about an orange? Let's, what about a, oh, I know, what about, what about experimenting with the colours that are in the, the in colours? So there's terracotta tile. And, oh, should we go for a seaside spray? Let's see what happens with those. So let's just figure out how that would work, actually. So that's pale, 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 pale purple there and a pale blue there. And then a terracotta, so that would be down there. Let's see how where that would fit. Yeah, so that would end up being the light light blue there, light purple there, but then a dark orange there. There we go. Right. It's all, it's all about maths. It really is. I say this so often. Art is really about maths. It's just, I think us artists don't think, we don't like to think that art is actually about maths. It scares us. But the more you can get to the point where you accept it, actually, the more enjoyable art is. Right, so that's terracotta tile. Let's get some... Let me just make sure that's... 
purple on it before. Right, now you know what I'm going to do is now when you first get a new ink pad it's almost a bit too juicy so what's helpful is if you just get something and swipe over the ink a little bit like this it makes it less juicier on that bit there and so you get ah yes better definition definitely on your especially these distinctive stamps that are so detailed you don't want too much ink on them because it almost spoils it and let's see this balmy blue I'm being naughty I'm not actually cleaning my stamps you have to get one of the yes do get one of one of those colour wheels um, I I haven't set up a, a link for it just yet, so if you don't mind just waiting, I'm not sure when I'm going to get time to do it, but um, I can set up a, a link directly to purchasing it. I'll, I'll see also if there's one available in America as well. Now, because I've gone for terracotta, it's quite a dark colour. I feel like I need to put a bit of terracotta somewhere else. So I'm going to my go-to texture stamp. Oh yes, you could get a coupon. Yeah, if you can get a coupon, if you get some money off, that's fantastic. Do you do that? Okay, I'm just doing this because I feel like I need to. That, that those roses are a little bit too bold, so I'm just softening the edges of them by putting a little bit of texture around the place. There we go. Um, slightly more unusual colour scheme, but doesn't mean it's wrong. Oh, this is definitely a distinctive stamp, so let's see what this comes out like now I've brushed the ink away. Oh, beautiful. It's very subtle. It is very subtle. The, this ink pad I wouldn't be using really for stamping sentiments or anything like that. It's it's definitely more of a, a background stamping kind of ink pad when when you can't can't be bothered to do stamping off <laughs> with some of the others. Um there we go. Yeah, I'm not convinced about combining it with terracotta tile. It's quite a bold combination. Not sure it's my favourite, but there we go. I took the risk for you. So when you finished with your slightly doctored ink pad, all you need to do is just swipe it back. So there we go. Um, I, I'm in I'm in the UK. We don't have Joanne's and Michaels. So if anyone in the states can tell me. That would be great. Or help Fred. That would be great. Right, well, I'm, I'm going to love you and leave you, I'm afraid, because I have an extremely busy day ahead tomorrow. I've got to do some lots of setting up for our event. We're putting up this, um, it's kind of like a gazebo thing, and then we're putting this white cargo net over the top, and then I'm setting up Christmas trees, and I'm a bit paranoid that I'm going to forget whose Christmas tree is who, because a lot of people have lent me theirs. So I need to write on the Christmas trees to make sure I know whose Christmas tree is whose. And then we've got some snowflakes to hang up around the place. We've got signs to go up. Um, all sorts of fun things. And costumes to finish and, and whatever. So, um, yeah. So let's just recap. So here is the purple posy with gorgeous uh, Highland Heather and gorgeous grape with the granny apple green, which I have to say I really do love. I, I like that colour combination. Then similar again, but this time with the soft sea foam, and you can just see how soft sea foam is, is slightly lighter, you know, very gentle, kind of pale green. And then just experimenting, seeing what it was like with something else, like terracotta tile. Um, I did have it on my desk, here it is, Mary Malo. And I thought, oh, I'd love to see these together at some point. Um, Mary Malo and you know, maybe a bit of green as well. That would be interesting to see how that 
how that looks. So I, I hope I'm not making you feel a little too disappointed that you can't order it just yet. Please just experiment with the colours you have and, you know, do the second generation stamping for now. But I hope you're excited about it becoming available. So there we go. Thank you very much, guys. And again, I do appreciate you being with me. And don't forget, if you'd like to purchase anything that you see, head to artfulstampin.co.uk. The link's below and you can shop to your heart's content. Don't forget to use the host code because then I can send you a free gift. Thank you, Louisa. Yeah, it is going to be fun. I'll try and get some photos. Um, yeah, of when it's all set up and, and everything. So take care for now, guys. Bye.